game theory. We're going to start with the most commonly used uh, normal form games. Normal form games. And that's just a way of representing the game. So a normal form game is represented by a matrix. Um, one dimension for each player. Let's say we have two players. We're going to have Alice and uh, Bob over here. Bob Red. And each player has a number of actions he can take. Let's say Alice can either do act, take action A or B. And let's say Bob can do either C or D. It could be any number of actions. I'm just doing two here to keep it simple. And it could be any number of players. Uh, you just need another dimension for each one. So you know, it's harder to draw three because you need a three dimension and so forth. And then inside here, the boxes, you're going to put the utility value that say Alice gets when she plays A and Bob plays C. Let's say that's one. Oops, I got the wrong color. I wanted to match the colors to the player. So Alice says get one. Two, that's a comma, three, comma, four, comma, and then we put Bob's, let's say, I don't know, one, two, three, four. I'm just making up numbers. Uh, but that's the idea. Very simple idea. So if Alice plays A and Bob plays C, then Alice is going to get one, Bob is going to get four. If Alice plays B and Bob plays D, then Alice gets four and Bob gets one. Now the basic assumptions was that you know the, these actions are effectively in parallel or I mean or you know basically Alice has to take her action without knowing what Bob's gonna play and vice versa. So they don't actually have to happen at the same time but the agents cannot know um, what the other guy is gonna play. So I'm gonna put that in a simultaneous Simultaneous. And um, the other big requirement is that they have common knowledge of the payups in the matrix. So these payups, like I said, these are utility functions. These are utility values. We talked about those, right? So these numbers are supposed to represent the utility that you know either A or Alice or Bob gets. And uh, common knowledge is uh, in important and interesting. So that means that Alice knows the payoffs. Alice knows that Bob knows that these are the payoffs. Alice knows that Bob knows that Alice knows that these are the payoffs. Alice knows that Bob knows that Alice knows that Bob knows that these are the payoffs. And so on at um, to infinity. Uh, it's a strange thing, but you know, if you don't have that common knowledge, it doesn't work. You're gonna get different answers for for a lot of the methods. Uh, you know, I mean, you can see that clearly. If Alice knows what the payoffs are, but Bob doesn't know, clearly Alice has you know an advantage in that case. Bob's probably just gonna pick randomly, so Alice is gonna adapt to that. Um, but anyway, so common knowledge. One of the interesting thing when we're building agent simulations is that you. Uh, we also know that common knowledge cannot really be achieved in places like the internet, you know, in message passing algorithms, uh, message uh, scenarios, um, without some tricks. Impossible to achieve. Impossible to achieve. We achieve it as humans uh, by sort of, you know, when we both look at the payoffs, uh, we both. You know, we kind of assume that we have now common knowledge of this payout, right? We both looked at them and we looked at each other and, okay, so he knows that I know that, he knows that, he knows that, and, that and so forth. Um, so we assume that. Yeah, but, you know, when you have machines in the internet sending packets to each other, the problem is that a packet uh, might not get there. Woof. And so, you you know, you have no uh, no guarantee that these that you can send him the payoffs, that he knows that you got the payoffs, and you know that he got the payoffs, and so forth. Uh, if you want to look this up, it's called the Byzantine Generals problem. The 
Byzantine general problem. It's not, um, so it comes up sometimes when building um, multi-agent based simulations. Um, so that's it. Now, what game theory actually deals with is you know not so much this stuff over here, but the the question of you know what happens. So you have this payoff with some numbers in there. Uh, there's sort of two questions that come up. You know, what do people do? Uh, what do people do in say this situation? What do people do? And uh, also, what should people do? And uh, those are of course not the same, right? So the first question is, what do people do? That's kind of a question for sociologists and psychiatrists. And people do experiments when they give people these matrices and they ask them to play them, and they record what people actually do. Uh, game theory, not so interested in that part. More interested in this one, because this one we can solve mathematically. We can, you know, under certain assumptions, if we assume rationality, uh, rationality or selfishness, or basically utility maximization. All these three words mean the same thing. So if we assume our agents want to maximize their utility, period, then we can, you know, mathematically determine what is their best strategy under certain circumstances. And we'll talk about that starting next.